name is Dawn Matthews and welcome to this series on computer hardware. So far, we have learned three very important words in computer terminology and they are input, processing and output. Today we will add another important component of the computer to this list. It is storage. Storage is a vital part of any computer system. But what does storage mean to you? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to distinguish between primary and secondary storage, describe developments in storage devices, and state the purpose of secondary storage. Storage refers to a process where you put something away for future use. So for example, if you have a box of chocolates and you want to keep some for later, then you would store them somewhere safe. Mm, like a place where my little brother can't find them. Correct. Now, data and information can also be stored by your computer for use at a later stage. This is useful for several reasons. Firstly, if you have stored a document you have worked on, you can make changes to that document without having to start all over again. Secondly, storing a document on a computer takes up less space than keeping a paper copy of the document. And thirdly, if you ever lose the paper copy, you can always go back to the stored document and print out another one. Computer storage can be either permanent or temporary. Temporary storage is also called primary memory and permanent storage, on the other hand, is called secondary memory. We discussed primary memory in a previous lesson. Do you remember RAM? For sure. Well, as you remember, data and information is temporarily stored in RAM while you work on the computer and is lost if you shut down the computer. If you do choose to save your work before shutting down, you are in fact storing this data or information in secondary memory. Data or information in secondary memory is safely stored until you choose to get rid of it. Data or information can be stored in several different ways and on several different hardware devices. The first type of storage device we will talk about is the one that you find inside your computer. It's called a hard drive. Generally, when you save something on the C drive of your computer, it means that you are storing information on the hard drive. A hard drive is also called a hard disk, and this is what a hard drive looks like. But inside this box is an amazing piece of technology called a read-write head. And what does it do? It does exactly what the name says it does. It can read information from the disk and write information onto the disk. Now, let's explain briefly how the hard drive works. Think of a book, a pencil and an eraser. The book is like your hard drive and the pencil and eraser are like the read-write heads. So, when you need to record something, you write it down in the book with your pencil. And I've decided to write Mindset. There you go. When you don't need that information anymore, you simply erase it. This is exactly the same way that a hard drive works. A hard drive allows you to save information on it and then, when you don't need that information anymore, you can delete or erase it. So, how many words can fit into one hard drive? Well, remember that not all computer information is in the form of words, but to give you an idea, you could probably take all the books from a library and fit them onto a single large hard drive. Wow, now that is a lot of information. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, just as you get different size books, you also get different size hard drives, like these two. I mean, look at this book. I bet you can't get too many words into this book. Now look at this bigger book. It has hundreds more pages than the smaller book. Which one do you think stores more information? Well, unless the writing is really, really small in the thin book, then the book with more pages is going to contain more information. Hard drives are the same, except that they don't have pages, they have bytes. 
The amount of space on a storage device is measured in something called a byte. A byte is the unit computers use to represent a single character like a letter, number or punctuation mark. For example, each G, 5 or question mark that you type will take up one byte of storage space. 1024 bytes makes up what is called 1 kilobyte. This is usually written as 1KB. 1024 kilobytes make up 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes makes up a gigabyte, written as 1GB and called a gig for short. 1 gig is equivalent to over 1 billion individual bytes. Most hard drives can hold between 20 and 80 gigs of information. But there are hard drives that hold over 1024 gigabytes. 1024 gigabytes is called 1 terabyte. This value can be rounded to 1000 for easier reference. Most people don't need a terabyte of storage space, but it is very useful for big companies like Liberty Life. Let's catch up with the guys at Liberty Life to find out about their terabyte machine. I'm standing in front of Liberty Life's latest storage device. Um, the device currently has 29 terabytes and can hold up to over 440 terabytes. Um, a terabyte is equivalent to 1 trillion text, text characters or 50,000 trees made into paper and printed. Our 29 terabyte machine would then be the equivalent of almost one and a half million trees. Now why do we need such a large amount of storage, you would ask. We have to keep all business related information related to our customers, our intermediaries, the customer policy records, um, and all communications sent to and received from customers. Centrally storing all of Liberty's data or production data in a huge device like this ensures availability, reliability, security and ease of management of the information. Now remember we said that there are many kinds of storage devices. So far we have looked at the hard drive which is inside your computer. You also get hard drives which are external and plug into the computer. But, in addition, there are other kinds of external storage devices which are not hard drives. CDs, like this, and DVDs, which we discussed in a previous lesson, are examples of these. They can store a wide range of digital information, including music, documents and video. These external devices make it possible to copy information from your internal hard drive onto an external storage device as a backup copy. Unlike internal hard drives, which are fixed to the computer, all external storage devices are portable. So you can take your backup copy and put it somewhere safe in case your computer is damaged or stolen. All big businesses have some kind of externally stored backup copy of their important information. External storage devices are also useful if you want to move lots of information from one computer to use on another. It's amazing how much information a small device can hold. For example, a whole set of encyclopedias. And here I have the same set of encyclopedias stored on a single CD. Which would you rather carry home to do your homework? Now clearly, external storage devices have made a big difference in the way we use computers. Every year these devices get smaller and more powerful. But a portable storage device is at risk of being damaged, especially if like a hard drive it has moving parts. Luckily, improvements in technology have also made portable storage devices tough and more difficult to damage. You can see that there have been some exciting developments in storage devices. Let's look back at some of the most important breakthroughs. Around 1956, IBM introduced the first computer disk storage system called RAMEC. RAMEC stands for Random Access Method of Accounting and Control. RAMEC could store approximately 5 megabytes of data on 50 disks. 
Each Remick disc was about 60 centimeters in diameter. That's twice as big as a dinner plate. Today, storage discs are no more than 7.5 centimeters in diameter and all the information stored on Remix 50 discs would easily fit on a single CD. Nevertheless, Remick was a huge step forward for computer storage and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers declared Remick an international landmark. Remick was the start of storage as we know it today. Then around 1970, Al Sugart and David Noble invented the floppy disk. And this is a floppy disk because it's floppy. You may not have seen one of these disks because they are not widely used today. But only a few years ago, everyone was using floppy disks as small, convenient storage devices. Over the years, these floppy disks got smaller and were eventually covered by a hard case. In South Africa, they are now commonly called stiffy disks and are probably the most widely used way of storing small amounts of data. The first stiffy disk that could store 1.44 megabytes of information was introduced in 1984. Floppy or stiffy disks can be damaged because they have moving parts. Then in 1985 came the compact disc or CD that could be read by a computer. Just get that out for you. This disc had 60 times the capacity of a floppy disc and could hold about 700 megabytes of information. The CD was developed by electronics company Philips and this little bit of plastic nearly changed the world. These thin little CDs could hold music text or any other kind of digital information. They were secure, long-lasting and reliable and they were not expensive to produce. But to make a CD you had to burn the information onto the disc using a laser. Once the information was written to CD it could not be changed or overwritten. This made CDs an ideal way to store large quantities of information that would never need changing. Then, the rewritable CD was invented. This disc allowed the user to write, erase and rewrite information to the same disc over and over again, just like with a stiffy disc. Because rewritable CDs are small and flexible, they've become a very popular way to store music, software, personal documents and other data. But there was one little problem. A whole music album could fit onto a single CD, but there was just not enough storage space to hold an entire movie. Luckily, this problem was solved in 1995 with the development of the DVD. DVDs can hold up to 7 gigs of information. This is enough to store an entire movie, thousands of photographs, hundreds of songs or millions of text files. The fact that you can do so much with a DVD explains its name, a digital versatile disc. CDs and DVDs are good storage devices because they have no moving parts. But you must be careful not to scratch or break them. There are always new storage devices being released onto the market and another important device is flash memory. Flash memory was developed around 1996 and has become very popular. Flash memory is known by a variety of names depending on the manufacturer. Some of these names are flash drive, flash disk, USB pen drive or memory stick. Flash memory can hold between 16 megabytes and 2 gigabytes of information. This means that a single 256 megabyte flash drive will hold as much data as 177 stiffy disks. Flash memory is an improvement on DVDs and CDs because it's smaller and more powerful. It's also harder to damage flash memory because it has a protective outer case. In addition, it's easier to use flash memory because it plugs straight into a port on the computer and does not have to be inserted into a special drive before it can be used. Now for your task. Write a paragraph to explain the difference between primary and secondary storage and say why secondary storage is important.
Plot the developments of storage devices on a timeline. Annotate your timeline to show how each device was an improvement on those that came before. Thanks for watching and don't miss our next lesson. And also don't forget to visit our website for more information. Goodbye.